What is up, guys? It's Bolty98, and we are delivering another episode of Watch the Feed. Welcome to it. Um, this is our third episode of this, and so far, you guys have been enjoying it, so I'm going to keep bringing it. Let's hop right into our news in the CDL this episode. We are going to be talking first about Snoopy and Boston Breach. Boston Breach is the first team to actually declare an announcement for the CDL, and they have announced that they are welcoming back Snoopy. The SMG they brought late into the season. So this is great news. We're actually starting to hear something from these teams, which is awesome because, like, it's starting to get well into, like, where we're like, okay, what's happening now? So then we'll hop straight over to Optic. Um, no announcements, no nothing still. Um, but another, you know, day where we haven't heard anything. And the last thing we heard is this about Kenny still being on Optic. You see here. I mean, he looks good in green, but uh, don't get me wrong there. But um, I don't know. I I wouldn't be mad about it. I, I definitely think he could, with Shotzi and Dashy, I think he could definitely fit in and do pretty well, do some damage. So I'm not too worried about this. Uh, but like I said, the longer we go without hearing anything, the more we can expect to see him in green at the moment. The finally, or not finally, but third, we're going to move over to this tweet about a former Optic member, CDL. They actually tweeted, Happy National Kitten Day to the ones who always get in our hill time. And they included Sam Octane and Dan Ghosty, which is awesome because, I mean, this is just a cool thing with uh, Ghosty getting recognized for what he did uh, with Optic. He did so much more than just get hill time, but it was cool to see that CDL actually recognized him. And, of course, you got Sam Octane, one of the best to ever do it. So that was also a pretty cool tweet by them, uh, you know, to see that happen. Now back into some news section of everything. We have a very big news as far as ARs go and former of what we talked about last time with Priesta getting dropped. It is, as of right now, Priesta and Slasher appear to be a team of two per, you know, Breaking Point, Jake Hall, and CDL Scrim Intel, which those are three good, two good sources there that can actually, you know, get back up their word. So, we may be looking at a team, the next team Priesta or Slasher to be on is a team that needs two ARs. One being a flex, obviously, with Priesta, and one being a main AR. So that would be cool to see these two on a team as they were on 100 Thieves, as you see here in this image. Um, again, just confirming the fact that this might be a potential AR duo that we see in the 2024 CDL season. So it would be huge to see um, this happen. Now we get into more of the sad news, not too... You know, you don't like to see this type of news, but again, about the Miami Heretics, it does look slowly and slowly becoming reality that they might not be a team this year. Um, as we get a tweet from them with a broken heart, and uh, yeah, it just doesn't look good because on that broken heart tweet, it then gets capped by uh, the Mutineers team, um, and it says they write a word called Derota, which means defeat with a broken heart, so I, I, maybe this just didn't work out for them. And maybe the Mutineers are either going to stay under the current management. Or, I mean, we could see Mutineers go completely away. The only thing that gives us hope that we will be seeing the Mutineers again is this image right here with Vickle, or Vickle. Um, Of course, he's a real cool guy. Vickle uh, here with a teammate, maybe, or a friend who just has a jersey. I'm not sure entirely of who this guy is. But uh, we see him wearing a Fordham Mutineers jersey, both of them. And uh, it does look to be um, interesting. It does look to have hope as far as being a Mutineer fan. Maybe Vickle is definitely staying. That was the word that if the Heretics didn't take over, Vickle and Brock or Brack would be the two that they try to build the team around. So that's huge to know. Um, and then we go over to this tweet by Jacob Hall again. Um, he says, a few weeks ago, I was told that Heretics X Mutineers manager might not be happening, but since then, I haven't had any confirmation. That said, uh, it would be weird if they go all Spanish in recent day, then everything apparently fall through. Uh, Mutineers still be tweeting in Spanish. Uh, the situation is weird, and I failed to lock down anything concrete on it. So at the moment, we don't have any like concrete news on this. But like I said, if the merger doesn't go ahead, they would most likely instead build around Vickle and Brock, um, which would be huge for those two guys. Um, I do like Vickle a lot. I'm in a lot of his live streams and stuff watching, and uh, he's a cool guy. I do enjoy watching his content, and uh, I just think both of them are good. I think everyone caps it all on Philo. I mean, if they just had a few more... You know, a few more games in there. They could have actually done something. I think just being put together in that last little bit probably hurt them. Didn't help out the greatest. But 
I mean, what do you guys think as far as this mutineer issue goes? Like, do we think they're good? Do we think that maybe they need to possibly look at something new? Where are we at with the the whole mutineer slash heretic battle or um, just debate? Honestly, it's at this point, we're just kind of up in the air. I would love, like I said, I would love all this to be fake. Heretics come in if they really want to come in. Mutineers go out if they really want to go out. But I would love more than anything to see the heretics come in, the mutineers stay in, and then we have a whole new extra team. Because like I've said time and time again, I'll continue to stay here on the watch feed. More teams, more money, more money, longer lifespan. That is all we want for the CDL. We want this to last so long because I really do enjoy watching the CL cover and CDL and seeing all this stuff going on. Um, it really brought the competitive Call of Duty to me. And that's the thing people don't understand. Like the CWL, when they did it that way, a lot of people love it. But the way it like, worked with me is I never really got involved until they started with this whole franchising of teams into cities and stuff like that. That really helped get me into it because it made it feel more like a, uh, what's the word, more organized. Like I knew this team, this team, and this team were here. And then there was no random, you know, once in a blue moon team coming in, we know it's phase, thieves, mutineers, subliners, optic. There's no Boston Breach Academy or uh, whatever the other team war, for example. Like, we just know the main teams are those main teams. So, I do really hope that this, you know, like I said, it's very slim, but I do hope that heretics get to come in, mutineers stay, and we just get an extra team in the league because that would be ideal as freak anyways next we're getting into this what this is our final topic and i really want to hear from you guys in the comments if you don't mind leaving one what improvements can the cdl implement next season to make the scene grow um this guy zinster said some of his thoughts i honestly liked a lot of his th thoughts like the pre-match shows um the hall of champions and then having open bracket at majors like majors looks just it's cool um the having an open bracket at majors, I don't like, uh, just because I, I don't know. It's just a little weird. I don't like random players being able to play pros. I feel like the pros should be a pro and be treated like a pro, like an actual priority there. Um, but I do think like more land, like open uh, tournaments, that like more coverage on the challengers, for example, like on the main uh, Twitch channel of Call of Duty. I mean, Call of Duty Bravo has been popping this uh, this season, so it was good to see that coverage. But I just think if they get more uh, viewership on that main channel, Skump maybe does some watch parties on it and stuff like that, it can really get that challenger scene growing. And like I said, more growth, more money, more money, longer life of everything. Challengers, CDL, and maybe... It'll grow more investment from other people to make their own teams or buy their own teams in the league, which just means more homes. Because challengers, I've watched, they are very fierce competition uh, competitors, and I do enjoy it. And I enjoy watching competing and everything. Like it is a lot of fun to watch uh, the pros or the best do what they do. I, I even know a coach um, of the Marine Corps uh, challenger team, and he's a really cool guy. Like. You don't even get to see them play because there's only one channel going, uh, you know, trying to do 60 or 50 different matches in a game, like in a day. Like, it's impossible. So, more coverage of that challenger would be one of the best things CDL can implement for me. Um, and just more of like the trade. Like, I, I wish we saw more trading instead of just flat out. Um, buying players that again that's just me because i do like the aspect of franchising and all that so it'd be cool to see like if this player gets traded for this player or this trade you know this trade goes through for money cash considerations uh maybe a draft of challengers like you have to bring in a few more uh challenger players every year i don't know how that would work because the you know then you'd have subs and extra payroll and all that so that probably wouldn't work, but it would be something cool to try to implement or look at. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Watch the feed. As always, I'm your host, Boldsy98. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.